Uh, in this part of the tutorial, this is just a general introduction, but issues to consider with strobes. One, you have to figure out a way to connect it with the camera. With a point and shoot setup, usually you will use a slave where the flash from the camera somehow triggers the uh, strobe. A fiber optic cable connection is a little bit um, more secure. With an SLR camera, we use, usually use a hot shoe where we hot wire the connection and we actually hot shoe and connect the cable right to the strobe. Okay? Also we have power controls. On some strobes, like on this Ike-like strobe, we have different settings for TTL and then different settings for manual, full, one-half, one-fourth. We can also further adjust it by settings on our housing, you know, exposure compensation, up and down, and then we can adjust it even further by our exposure compensation settings on the camera. So we have different ways to control the strobe output. Other issues with the strobe is recycle time, okay? You take a picture, okay, and you have one to three seconds before that will fully recharge and you can, again, discharge a full charge. Okay, with the Ike-like strobes, the recycle time is pretty quick, generally a second or less. Uh, another is how many shots are you allowed per full charge. Uh, with this strobe I think I get about 300 shots or more which is pretty good. Some strobes might have a hundred or fewer. Another issue is the area of coverage. Uh, some strobes might allow a narrower coverage like 70 degrees, others will be 90 or 100 or even 120. In general the broader the area of coverage of the cone of light the better. Finally, we need to understand the quality of light. Um, we generally don't shine the strobe right on the subject that might create a hot spot and cause more backscatter. We will talk about this in greater detail on later tutorials, but it's nice to use the edge of the light or edge of the cone of light where it's a little softer. Uh, we can also add a diffuser which kind of further softens the light and expands the angle of coverage, though it does limit the power somewhat. Another issue is the size and bulk. I usually travel with two to three of these Ike Light strobes. One problem, I love them, but they're pretty darn heavy. That's a, that's a bit of a problem. Finally, some strobes have a spotting light, which I generally do not use. A spotting light allows you to theoretically spot and focus on the subject. But we usually don't aim our strobes right at the subject anyway. We use different quality of lighting or edge lighting. So I usually do not use that, although it's nice to have a backup on a night dive, you can get a little bit of light. I'd rather have a separate light, a focus light elsewhere, but we'll talk about that more later. Finally, we have issues of strobe positioning. The distance of the strobe to the subject, the position of the strobe with regard to the camera and the subject, and the angle that the strobe is actually going to point, and we will talk about that more later. Okay, the next part I'm going to talk about some of the problems that I have had with strobes and how to solve them, and then we're going to give tips on shooting with strobes for macro and tips with shooting with strobes for wide angle, and there will be more subsequent, more advanced tutorials down the line. Thanks for tuning in.